today to bust some myths about knitting sweaters. My most cherished beliefs a myth? Sweater season is coming. Uh, I know perhaps that's hard to believe when the high temperature is around 100 degrees Fahrenheit um, fairly frequently, but it is coming. Um, which means that now is actually a great time to start planning for the sweaters you want to knit for the fall. Um, and before we all get started on that, I thought I would take a few minutes and just bust some myths about knitting sweaters. So uh, whether you are a new sweater knitter, a sweater or a knitter who has never embarked on a sweater but would like to, whatever the case may be, hopefully this um, video will open your eyes about some myths uh, that have become prevalent in the knitting community about sweaters uh, that simply aren't true. Okay, so that's just a myth. All right, the first myth I want to dispel is that when you are set to knit a sweater and you are picking out your size, you just need to look at the bust measurements. No, <laughs> this is not true for a variety of reasons. Um, one, a lot of us don't actually know our bust measurements. And so we think bra band size. No. Um, your bra band size is not equivalent to the measurement of your bust at the fullest point. And that is the information that you need to know uh, to pick your sweater size. Um, so, um, don't make that mistake. That's the mistake I made when I first started knitting sweaters. Oh, I wear a 34, then I should knit the size 34. No. Um, so first of all, you need to actually know the measurement of your bust at the fullest point. That should be your starting point. However, there are a lot of other measurements that go into a sweater. And particularly if you are very well endowed, but smaller in other areas, just choosing the size that fits your bust is going to give you a sweater uh, that is way too big everywhere else. If you are built so that maybe you have broader shoulders or you know you don't have much of a waist but you have a smaller bust size, that can throw off uh, your sizing as well. So yeah, you want to start with the bust measurement and that is usually how sweater patterns uh, the size is provided in the pattern and on the pattern page. That's just your jumping off point though. You do want to check some other things. Um, and again, you want to be comparing that measurement to your full bust measurement, not your bra band size. Uh, and you do want to check some other measurements as well. Um, so hopefully there has been a lot of movement toward designers, including the schematic on the pattern page. So you can check that out ahead of time. Um, but if not, it doesn't hurt to ask the designer if they can please send you the schematic before you buy the pattern. You should not have to buy the pattern to see the schematic. Uh, if there is not a schematic, that um, is a problem. That should maybe be a red flag. Uh, and you want to check some of the other measurements. That way you know um, how the sweater is you know, designed to fit and whether perhaps choosing another size and adding um, bust darts to give you more room in the front of the sweater uh, is gonna be a better choice so that it fits all the parts of you and not just uh, your chest. Um, so other things that you are maybe gonna to be looking at are the uh, waist circumference and hip circumference, those are really important, um, especially, you know, if you're built more like this or you're built more like this, you really want to know that information. Um, helpful information may or may not be of use to you would be the cross shoulder measurement, um, particularly for color work yoke sweaters. This can be really important, um, especially if you perhaps have narrow or broad shoulders. Um, a yoke depth can be helpful which is, you know, this measurement from here to here. Um, you may want to know that ahead of time if you are aware that your, you know, your depth <laughs> is a little bit off. Um, and um, having more information at your disposal is always uh, going to work in your favor. So, um, yeah, the bust measurement should be your jumping off point, but you do need to check the other measurements 
uh, to maybe get a better idea of what size is going to fit you overall and then make adjustments where necessary. Um, and again, not your bra band size. That's not it. Number two, all X weight yarns are the same. So if the sweater, call, sweater pattern calls for worsted weight and you have a worsted weight, should be fine. No. <laughs> worsted weight or DK weight or fingering weight isn't telling you that much information about your yarn other than a ballpark diameter of the strand of yarn. Um, again, just like in the last point, it's a good jumping off point. But there are some other things that you need to consider. So a worsted, a sweater that's knit in worsted weight wool um, is going to drape and fit a lot differently than a sweater that is worked in worsted weight cotton. And you can't just swap out one for one. Um, so a good idea is to match the fiber content of the yarn that is called for in the pattern. So you never really have to buy the exact same yarn that is used in the pattern. That's, I can't think of any situation where that's necessary. Um, with the possible exception of the kinds of patterns that, um, you know, like some patterns really rely on using spin cycle dyed in the wool to create the kind of fading effect that goes on. Um, and there are very few alternatives to spin cycle dyed in the wool. But other than situations like that, um, you don't necessarily need to match the yarn that is used in the pattern, but the yarn you choose should have similarities to the yarn used in the pattern other than just the name on the label, the yarn weight name. Um, not least of all because they're just kind of a ballpark. I have used DK weight yarns that are really more like a worsted. I have used worsted weight yarns that are quite honestly closer to a fingering. Um, so that designation uh, might give you a general idea and again, can be used as a jumping off point, but that's really all it is, a jumping off point. Um, so you want to compare, uh, again, the fiber content, you wanna to try to match that. Um, you also wanna consider superwash versus non-superwash. Those wools behave differently. Um, so if the pattern calls for a superwash wool and you are using non-superwash or vice versa, that's something to consider because those fibers are gonna behave differently. Um, you also want to look at the spin of your yarn. So a worsted wor versus woolen spun yarn. A woolen spun yarn uh, tends to be very um, light and airy, um, sometimes a little bit more rustic. It is not tightly spun. Uh, and all of these things are going to impact how the yarn behaves in your sweater. So if the sweater in question is worked in a, a, a nice tightly spun worsted weight yarn, a nice tightly worsted spun yarn, and you've got kind of a, a loosely spun woolen spun yarn, doesn't matter if they're both worsted, weight. The, they're gonna behave very differently. Um, the other thing you wanna double check is the yardage. So that can, like I said, a worsted weight can encompass a lot of different um, yarn diameters. So a good idea is just to take a look at the weight, like the actual weight, 50 grams, 100 grams, and the yardage or the meterage, um, and get something that's kind of in the same ballpark. It doesn't have to be exact, okay? If you've the pattern is using something that's 110 yards, 50 grams, and you've got 50 grams, 120 yards, that's fine, normally. Um, that's not going to be a major difference in the, the diameter of your yarn. Um, but if you've got somebody who's using a fingering weight that is 100 grams, 425 yards, and you have a fingering weight that is supposedly a fingering weight that is 100 grams, 350 yards, that's really closer to a sport weight. And that's something you want to look at. So don't just rely on the yarn weight designation, fingering DK worsted. Really kind of investigate the yarn that is being used in the pattern, um, the 
the yarn that the designer used in the sample and try to get something that is similar. It doesn't have to be identical, but you want it to have a, uh, a similar fiber content and a similar construction in terms of its spinning and plying. Uh, if you are new to knitting sweaters, you may have heard that uh, it's great to start with raglan sweaters um, because they are easiest. Um, raglan sweaters tend to be very straightforward. The shaping, um, especially a top-down raglan, you start by casting on at the neck, you create increases here and matching ones on the back. They're all, you know, in a neat orderly fashion. Um, there's not a whole lot of creative, innovative shaping going on. So they have sort of a very standard shape. Um, and they're sometimes can be relatively easy to kind of memorize. It's, you know, you've got two increases for each of four raglan lines throughout the yoke um, and then it's done and then the body of your sweater is very simple. Um, so all of this is true, but that doesn't mean that if you're a beginner, you absolutely have to start with a raglan sweater. Um, yes, other styles of sweaters can be more involved, but all sweaters are just knitting and purling. So uh, don't, don't let the style and construction of your sweater necessarily be um, what makes that decision for you if you're a beginner. So while raglans are very straightforward, if that's not a style of sweater you like and you want a sweater that is going to have a very personalized fit, that's not where you want to go. You can, with knowledge and experience and practice, learn to create a raglan sweater that fits you really well. But that's something that it takes time um, and patience <laughs> um, and sort of the accumulation of sweater knitting knowledge that you will build up eventually. Um, but right off the bat, without any customization, raglans are just in general kind of a loose fitting, not a whole lot of shape going on sweater. So if you don't think that's the kind of style of sweater that you want, you don't have to begin with a raglan just because everyone says raglans are easy and good for beginners. Start with any kind you want. Again, if you have to sew the sleeves into a uh, set in sleeve sweater, yeah, that's gonna be tricky and it's gonna take patience and you might have to redo it a couple of times, but a set in sleeve sweater um, almost always has a, a better fit because that's the style of sweater it is. It is designed to fit the human body better than a raglan. You know, a human body isn't actually shaped like this. Um, the set in sleeve sweater mimics the shape of the human body better, so it's gonna have a better fit. Um, so overall, you can start with any kind of sweater style that you want. You should know what you're getting into. You should learn about the different styles, the different fits. Um, but don't jump on the raglan bandwagon just because everyone says it's a great easy starting point. Yes, it's very straightforward, but it's a more limited style uh, that has a less personal fit. And you need to take that into consideration um, rather than knit a sweater that you're, you're going to end up not wearing because you don't like the fit. So that's not to say you can't start with a raglan, um, but Raglans aren't for everyone and you don't have to start with the quote unquote easiest kind of sweater. So knowledge is power. Learn about sweaters. That's a sweater. I'm going to talk more about that uh, at the end. All right. This is a big one. <laughs> Swatching in general is hard to sell people on, even though it's so, 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 so important to get a sweater that fits. Um, but even among people who do swatch, you hear a lot of comments to the effect that row gauge doesn't matter. You can just adjust the length of your sweater. So if your row gauge is off, it's no big deal. This is not correct. It is, it's, it's next door neighbors with correct. You're almost there. 
Row gauge is much, much easier to adjust for than stitch gauge. Um, so when you are swatching for a sweater, if you can't get both, yes, you should focus on your stitch gauge, absolutely, because it is easier to adjust your row gauge. However, that doesn't mean row gauge doesn't matter. Um, in some places in a sweater, yeah, you can just knit longer. You can make your sleeves longer, you can make the body of your sweater longer. But when it comes to the shaping in the yoke, um, particularly for a set in sleeve sweater, but also for raglans and, and uh, circular yokes, the shaping is designed based on a certain row gauge. And if yours isn't the same, but you still follow the same shaping instructions, you know, increase every so many rows, so many times, you're going to end up with a yoke or an armhole that is either too long or too short. So row gauge does matter in that if yours is different, you need to know that and you need to know by how much so that you can make adjustments. The only sweater where this really isn't true is a drop shoulder because a drop shoulder is just knit the yoke until it's so long and you can fix that. But a raglan, a um, circular yoke, a set in sleeve, a seamless set in sleeve, all of the shaping that happens in those yokes is based on a certain row gauge. And it's not as easy as just knit longer or knit shorter. You need to know how much your row gauge is off so that you can make your adjustments. Now, if your row gauge is only off by, I don't know, half a stitch per row, that might be less of a concern. You know, that's only gonna give you a, a yoke that's a teeny bit shorter or longer. But it, especially if you have a significant row gauge, you need to know about it so that you can adjust for it. You can't just simply knit your yoke longer or shorter if you're following shaping instructions for other styles of sweaters. I have a video about how to go about adjusting your row gauge that you can check out. Um, but it's not right to say row gauge doesn't matter. It's less important, but you need to know if yours is off and you need to know by how much. So it does matter. It doesn't matter as much as stitch gauge. You really wanna go for that stitch gauge if you can't get both, but don't just ignore a row gauge difference. Ladies and gentlemen, that myth is crap. This one is I have a hard time talking people into this, but I, I promise it's true. Um, really, none of us enjoy seaming. There's, there's not much to like about it. Um, it's tedious. It can be frustrating. Um, but that doesn't mean you should avoid it at all costs. Um, all sweaters nowadays, all sweater patterns seem to be seamless. Uh, and yeah, it is a lot easier to knit a seamless sweater. I will absolutely agree with you there. Um, but there are a lot of times where having some seams is really important. So seamless isn't always better. Is it easier? Yes. Uh, and in some kinds of sweater constructions, it's fine. But that doesn't mean seamless sweaters are the be all and end all. Um, Seams provide structure for sweaters. Uh, and there are certain places that you really want structure and there are certain times that you really want structure. So um, I will never say a bad thing about a seamless set in sleeve. It looks beautiful and it is so much nicer to do than to try to sew a sleeve into an armhole. So I am all about a seamless set in sleeve. But there are some other parts of a seamless set in sleeve sweater that are going to be providing structure. Um, you're going to have, you know, a, a seam across the shoulder, or maybe you've got a saddle across the shoulder where you're picking up. Um, you've got, it's not the same as a seam, but the pickup around the armhole of a seamless set in sleeve is adding some structure there. Uh, so that, that structure is still being built into the shape. Um, where I think we run into some problems are 
um, sweaters that need a little bit more structure in the body, but because we all just want to knit all our sweaters in the round, it's not there. Um, so this can be particularly true of certain, working with certain fibers. Um, alpaca is so slippery, silk, um, cottons, which tend to just kind of stretch out and stay that way. They don't have a lot of resilience. They're not gonna spring back. Um, when you don't have the seams in the body to kind of provide some structure and hold the shape of your sweater, then over time, your sweater is going to stretch out. And especially if you're using those kind of slippery fibers that don't have a lot of um, elasticity, it's gonna stay stretched out. My sweater! This is also true of raglan sweaters. Um, again, because there is no, especially if you've got a completely seamless raglan, there's, there's no seams in the body, there's no seams in the shoulder, there's especially if you've got something that's worked completely in one piece from the collar down, you have absolutely no structure going on here at all. Um, picking up along a bound off edge is not gonna have the same structure as an actual seam, but it's um, much more structure than nothing, than just knitting straight the whole time. Um, and that's not to say there aren't some, some sweaters that look fine like that. Um, but my bigger concern here is people finding a seamed pattern and um, modifying it to be seamless. A lot of times those seams are there for a reason. So uh, for example, right now I am working on this um, little tank top design and it's gonna have seams because the yarn is, it's a 70-30 cotton wool, um, it is just too soft, too slippery, and doesn't have enough elasticity to have a seamless body. It's just gonna end up being too shapeless. So I'm gonna have seams. And I don't like seaming any more than anybody else does, but I think they're important for the structure of the sweater. Um, so that's not to say that you can't modify sweater patterns to be seamless, but, you know, Proceed with caution. Make sure you are reading through your pattern and maybe, you know, trying to figure out why the designer decided to in include seams, why the designer decided not to have a seamless sweater. But like if you're working from like a, a vintage pattern, they didn't have seamless sweaters because they didn't have, you know, high quality circular knitting needles that are interchangeable like we do today. Um, that's sort of a different issue. But if the designer in the year of our Lord 2023 has included seams, they're probably there for a reason. So it's just something to think about. Um, seamless sweaters, yes, they are much faster, much easier, but uh, seams do serve a purpose um, depending on the design and the construction of the sweater and the yarn that is being used as well. So please keep that in mind. Seamless isn't always better. And the last one I wanna talk about um, has to do with sweater fit. And when we finish a sweater and it doesn't fit us, um, sometimes the, the knee-jerk reaction is, is to blame the pattern designer. Uh, and uh, there are plenty of patterns out there that were not graded well and truly don't fit. Um, bodies the correct way. But the reality is that designers are creating a sweater in maybe 10 sizes, hoping it's going to fit millions of people. And humans are so different. And human bodies are so different. So most designers are working from some kind of standards. Um, this might be Craft Yarn Council. Those are a little out of date. Uh, Isolde has created some nice standards that a lot of people are using. There are a few other designers um, who have worked on it as well to create a set of standards. And what I mean by standards is that for XYZ bust measurement, 
the cross shoulder measurement should be this, the yoke depth should be this, the, you know, uh, hip circumference should be this, the body length should be this, the back neck width should be this, plus intended ease. Um, but humans don't fit standards and designers can't possibly create a sweater that's going to fit exactly everybody exactly the same way. It's just, it's just not humanly possible. So designers have to start from somewhere and that somewhere is usually some kind of set of standards. Um, and so it's worth your time to take your measurements and compare them to CYC standards, um, or, you know, the designer's probably not telling you what standards they're using. So Craft Yarn Council is, um, probably the most widely used and widely known. Compare your measurements and see how you compare to these standards. If you have much broader shoulders, for example, than the standard for your bust size, then that's going to be a problem for pretty much every sweater you knit, um, that the shoulders are not going to be broad enough. And it's not the designer's fault because they only have this, you know, a, a set of standards to work from that can't possibly encompass every human body. Um, and that's, that's true for all of, all of the measurements that go into a sweater pattern. We can't create a pattern that's going to fit every single person because it's just, there's, you know, 8 billion people in the world. And we have a chart that says for this size bust, probably their shoulders are going to be this wide. Um, so just something to think about, um, Designers are working from something. They're not just pulling numbers out of thin air, but a set of standards is just that, a set of standards that apply to the average human shape. Um, but with 8 billion people in the world, it's not possible that every human is going to match those standards. Um, so obviously we wanna use patterns because trying to create a sweater for ourselves from scratch is, um, quite an endeavor and using a pattern is obviously going to make that a little bit easier. Um, but one pattern can't possibly fit everybody. Uh, so it is worth it to inform ourselves about the existence of these standards that designers are using um, and our own bodies taking our measurements and figuring out where we fit into the average and where we don't so that we know ahead of time that that's something we're going to have to adjust in future patterns. And it's probably going to be all the patterns because we fall outside of some standard. So for me, I'm very short waisted. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, so patterns that are supposed to be, you know, hitting right at my hip are much longer. Um, that's an easy adjustment to make, fortunately for me. Um, but I'm always knitting, you know, my sweaters shorter than what's called for. Whereas my sleeves, I'm always knitting longer than what's called for because I just I have very long arms and legs and a very short torso. Um, and that's true for pretty much everybody is gonna have, you know, at least one thing that's, that's not quite within the standards. Um, so you just want to Find out what those things are for you so that you can make adjustments in your sweater patterns and not keep, you know, searching for this mythical pattern uh, that's going to fit you perfectly because it might not be out there. Um, and if you're outside whatever is considered the standard, then that's something that you should know um, to empower you to, to create things that are going to fit you and that you love to wear. It's cold outside. You'll need a sweater. A sweater. All right, so I am done busting sweater knitting myths. I hope you found this video useful. If you are interested in learning more about sweaters, then I encourage you to check out my e-course, Sweater Siren. Sweater Siren is a four-week e-course that I created all about sweater knitting. It is designed to help you learn to knit sweaters that fit, flatter, and last a lifetime.
over the course of this e-course, we will be talking about sweater fit, how to uh, get sweaters that actually fit you. We will be talking about different sweater styles and constructions and which might be more flattering uh, for your body type. We will be talking about how to make adjustments to not only fit, um, but to style, to personal preference so that you end up uh, getting uh, sweaters that you love in the end. We'll be talking about sweater care and maintenance, how to make your sweaters last, how to repair them when they spring holes and other such things. And we'll be talking a little bit about how to get a jump start on perhaps creating your own personal sweater that you love from scratch, no pattern needed. Uh, so if that sounds like something that is of interest to you, you can head over to mediaperuana.com slash sweater siren, or you can click the link in the description box down below to find out more about my e-course, um, which I love and created just because I love knitting sweaters so much. And I wanted to share all of the information I have gathered over the last 15 or so years of knitting sweaters. Thank you again for joining me in this video and I hope I will see you soon in another video.